guys, what's going on? Um, this is Dark Collector here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, I got here with me, Neji Nerd. Go ahead, say what's up. How y'all doing out there in the world and all the, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Big Pearlies, he got the Big Pearlies on. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, just give our little thoughts, you know, do a little bit of a review on it. Uh, I know plenty of other people has been talking about it and giving their opinion, so we just figure we give our two cents, if that matters to anybody, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into it. We got a little list here, so we're just going to go ahead and get into it. Um, so a little list of a couple little topics. So let's see what we got here first on the list. Uh, we're just going to jump from the beginning and talk about the uh, whole bomber space scene with uh, uh, Poe Damien flying around trying to uh, destroy the uh, Dreadnought with the bombers and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let my guest Neji take it off and just let me know what he thought about that whole bombing scene and everything like that. All right, so first and foremost, you know Ned the Nerd is going to get you, right? Because you <laughs> announced a dreadnought. And it's the dreadnought. He's going to be like, hey, man, look, you hey. point that little bit out, I'm going to have to get you. We're going to see him yep, in the comments. Gonna be like, we'll, see, we'll see that nerd in the comments. <laughs> yep. All right. But, uh, yeah, I personally, I did like the scene. I just kind of wish that, uh, you know, he had some help because he was very confident in it. And he is a really good leader to me. I actually really like his character. And if it was up to me, I would have supported him. I would have, you know, if I was Princess Leia and everything. That's just me. But I don't know how you feel about it. Well, yeah, that very first part where he was like, you know, he was there doing his mission. All right, first and foremost, the thing that bugged me the most, when they started out and Poe Damon flew up to the, uh, you know, the big old dread knock, knock, whatever, hard knock life. <laughs> um, he, he did the phone call and he was just like, Hey, can I speak to general Hawks? And like Hawks was like, yup, I'm here. Hawks is speaking. I'm going to destroy everybody. And he like was going back and forth with him. Like he couldn't really hear him. I understand that was like, he was trying to be tactic, tactical and like distract him and stall so he can, you know, charge up his thrusters or whatever. But it just... It just didn't fit with me in the movie. Like, it just didn't seem like Star Wars. Nothing about that says Star Wars to me at all. You know, yes, it was humorous, and yes, it was tactical, but it just, it didn't seem like Star Wars to me at all. So I'm just going to say that first and foremost. Kind of threw me off in the movie. I was just like, in the theater, like, is this real? Like, I, I, I don't know. It just threw me off. And then you go into the parts where he goes and he actually does his mission, but then he realizes, okay, I can destroy their dreadnought. I was half and half. So I, I do have agree if you can destroy this thing, take it out. At the same time, though, I did understand Princess Leia because she's like, look, man, this is this is not what we came here before to do. So, you know, I guess we may not be properly prepared or, you know, we don't want a lot of casualties which actually did happen, you know what I mean? So you, you got the bombers coming in, okay? So he's like, all right, let's do this. Bombers come in, which made no sense to me, this part here. Bombers come in from hyperspace, okay? Hyperspace, okay? You got the dreadnought here. The bombers come out here, boom, come out of hyperspace, okay? They're going like, oh, my God. They was going so slow. I don't understand why they were just like floating along in space. Like if you're gonna go that slow, why not come out of hyperspace like over the dreadnought? I just thought that was just, that part, that whole scene just, I mean, it was kind of good cause it had me kind of like on the edge of my seat. Cause I was like, are they gonna do it? They're just going so slow. It just logically made no sense to me. You know, what you think about that Neji? To be honest, I feel like a lot of, a lot of the movie was going at like seven miles per hour. I do feel like that in space. <laughs> <laughs> like you're so right. Like why not just like stop the hyper, you know, the hyper speed 
the high right over the speed. thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just strong. <laughs> that was weird to me. But I mean, maybe maybe it was hard to aim. Maybe they were just like, hey, this is the general coordinates that we need to stop at to support Poe. So maybe they can't really, you know, do it exactly, you know, great. You know what I mean? Like they can't do it so precise. Because I remember when they were uh, when there was rebels leaving the base on that one planet where they were evacuating it, the uh, the dreadnought, I think it was a star destroyer and like the other ships, they like hyperspace then, but they still had to like, you know, get over where they were. And you know, they weren't exactly over it. You know what I mean? Or even in range to start shooting yet. So I just don't think that they, uh, you know, that they could really do it. They weren't capable. But the fact that those bomb destroyers were like this and everyone else was fighting like this, you know, going nice and fast and everything, that part was stupid to me. Just the bombers just going just <laughs> like that. It was dumb. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so <laughs> you know what? You might have a point. You know, I'm not a light speed engineer tech, so I, I'm not sure on the uh, whole coordinates thing and putting stuff in. But yeah, maybe they have to hyperspace in at a certain distance um, mm -hmm. to know. Maybe they didn't know exactly where the dreadnought was. I don't. I don't know. I mean, even though I'm thinking of like Han Solo hyperspace and like okay, so Force Awakens, Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. Went into hyperdrive out of the dang cargo bay of a ship. Okay, so you're telling me that these bombers could not fly right above another ship? I don't know. It just, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> Star Wars logic, I guess. So I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, the other thing about that scene that I thought was a little weird was that they didn't use any Y, uh, y wings, and Y wings are generally like you know they're used for bombers, but I guess maybe this being like a new era, they use newer type of spaceships, which you know makes sense. Things evolve, you know, over time, so they figured there's better, better. I think the Y wings were faster though. I'm pretty sure they were faster, but maybe they didn't hold enough firepower. So there's that there. Uh, the other thing was, so when you come up to the uh they when they came up to the dreadnought they there was a lady in there in the I, I don't know her name i don't think they ever said her name or anything uh i don't even did she even say anything i don't even remember her even saying anything i think she's i don't remember anyway so <laughs> <laughs> that old scene didn't really make logical sense to me okay so because the bay doors open up okay she's trying to get the receiver remote to drop all the bombs the doors open up there's no ray shield or nothing right there no no sort of space barrier or nothing space is right there what is keeping the oxygen in the spaceship okay inside the bomber uh gravity maybe i can understand because you know she's still in the actual spaceship so maybe gravity is holding in there but i, I just I don't know. Just the oxygen thing. I feel like she should have been sucked out. I don't know. Star Wars logic again. Who knows? So, you know, so she actually <sighs> was able to kick the remote. So remember, the person dropped the remote, and she was able to kick the remote down. As it was falling down, I was thinking, dang, she's going to miss it. You know what I mean? And I was, like, really thinking how crazy this would be if she misses the remote and she just blows up and dies and nothing happened the dreadnought is good and everything is fine that's what i seriously was thinking and i was like man that'd be a crazy twist if they you know if they went that way but um you know they didn't she actually grabbed it which i had an issue with the way she grabbed it okay here's the platform okay the thing drops next to the platform like this Somehow she grabs it and her arm is underneath the platform. Did you notice that? I don't know if you noticed that. She's like holding it like I, this. Like it made <laughs> uh, Star Wars logic, I guess. Weird. Star Wars logic. So, you know, that scene right there I thought was odd. But, you know, I mean, what did you think about that little part there? I thought it was a lot of inconsistencies in that. That's a good the way to use. 
the way there was no force field or anything to like keep the air from getting sucked out and stuff, there's no way technology advanced that much because if you looked on some of the bigger ships, they still had the blue. I forgot what you call the force field, but you you know yeah, what I'm talking about. They still have that. Shields. Ray Fields. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think and I'm sure people will let us know. Like Ed the Nerd's gonna be like, no dummy, that's a, that particular type of force field, plasma, old matter, whatever. Ray <laughs> Shields. That's what I'm gonna yeah. use. Okay. I'm sorry, I work a little too much to, to really <laughs> know everything possible. I don't but, know. Uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it, was, it was stupid that the the way she caught it. As it was dropping to me, I feel like she could have left her arm up and just caught it that way. Yeah. But it kind of seemed like she just laid down like this, let the thing go past her head, somehow grabbed it like this, <laughs> and then when the scene turned back around, she had it under the platform like that. Yeah, man. And I was sense. like, what, what kind of, what kind of, is she an alien? Like, you know, maybe yeah. she's from a different planet and she could like wrap her arm and do that. I don't know, but it was done Marsha to me. Martian Manhunter. Yup, just I, I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that yeah, that whole scene was just uh, was just odd. So, um, but you know, they did. They was able. They made it over. She actually caught it. She hit the button. You know, the bombers fell, blew up the dreadnought. So you know that that whole explosion scene was really good and stuff like that. And. Um, I liked, uh, like, towards the end of that scene, I will have to say I really liked how Poe Damon was flying because he was, he was in a dogfight with TIE Fighters, you know, and he's just, like, bouncing around, and he did the – there's a scene, if y'all ever seen the movie, I think it's called Red Tails. I th Red Tails or Red Wings, and it's, like, an old, like, old, like, World War One or World War Two movie where there's, like – you know, like black African American pilots, you know, trying to, you know, serve their country. And there's just this one scene that this guy does that Poe Damon did. And I got to figure out that scene, you know, but maybe it might be in a little box or something. But anyway, he did that scene. I thought that was really cool. And the way he got back to the, uh, their starship or whatever, the way he came in, he was just like, like, I just thought that was really cool. He he could definitely fly. That's that's one good thing about him. He could definitely fly. So um, I'm not a big Poe Damon fan though, but I, I do. Do you like Poe Damon? I mean, he's not bad. I, I got nothing against him. He, he was uh, he was pretty cool to me. Uh, I don't know if that was like his real name or whatever, but other than other than Star Wars, no, I don't think I've ever seen this guy. Yeah, true. Um, but I said the first time we seen him was in Force Awakens. So, but you know, pretty cool character. Yeah. He's the, I guess, the space cowboy or new Han Solo, if you will. He has that kind of space cowboy kind of, um, like just arrogant, just kind of stubborn type of. I'm gonna do what I gotta do the most, you know, outlandish way possible type of feel. So he just kind of reminds me of Han Solo a little bit. So, um. Yeah, so after that scene, you know, they go into hyperdrive, they escape, so we, so we, so called, um, and right when they um, escape, General Hux um, got a phone call, okay, from Snoke, okay, Prime Leader Snoke, and, uh, you know, Hux, General Hux, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about, people. Um, <laughs> General Redhead, General Redhead dude, um, was like, okay, cool. I'm going to take it in my, in my private quarters. And as he went to go walk, you know, Snoke popped up on the hologram, just a big hit. And, um, that part there, I was just like, I was kind of really interested in that because I was like, okay, you could kind of see General Hawks like really being scared. And I'm thinking, man, I wonder what's the type of presence that Prime Leader Snoke has. And then, you know, Hux is like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and talk to this guy, you know, all confident, like I got no fears. And then Snoke just snatched the life out of him. He just straight snatched him up, dragged him on the floor. <laughs> like, there was no need to mop. He literally mopped the floor 
with General Redhead. Like, he literally scooted him across the floor, turned the whole hologram around, and I'm thinking to myself, like, first of all, I was, like, kind of stunned that he did that. I thought that was cool. But the other thing that popped in my head, I was like, is Snoke across the galaxy, or is he in the same starship? Because if he's not in the starship, that's some crazy force powers. Like, we've never seen that before. We've seen, like, Darth Vader use, like, you know, force choke through like the uh, the telecom. You know, when he was talking to the to the one guy, and he said, "You have failed me for the last time," and he chokes him out. But they was on the same star destroyer, so I I don't. You, you find out later on that Snoke is not on the same ship. He actually has his own crazy big massive ship across the galaxy. So I thought that was really impressive. That little scene right there. Did did you uh? What did you think about that scene when Snoke popped up on the hologram? You know, Darth Vader or Anakin is one of my favorite people to wield a lightsaber, period. Other than Starkiller from the Force Unleashed video games, Anakin was probably the greatest through comics and everything. I thought he was the best Force user. The thing, the crazy thing is, like you said, Snoke was across the galaxy on a whole nother ship. And that right there... I can't even fathom how he even just mopped the floor with this dude. Like, literally just, man, it was like he was the floor's toilet paper. He just straight swoop. And <laughs> that that part was really crazy to me. I still really like Anakin and Starkiller, even if he's not Kana or Kanon or Canon, whatever. But Snoke definitely, he, he had a presence about him, even if he didn't last very long. Which frustrates me. We'll get to that anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. So, uh, we'll get to that. Fire in my <laughs> eyes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, going past that, feeling the presence of Snoke, you go past that, and General Huck saying, you know, don't worry, we we got them on a leash. You know, we got them on a rope. And you're trying to figure out well, what they mean by that. So, you know, a couple scenes go by and things like that. And um, you have them, the rebels come out of hyperspace, you know, and they think they escape and they're far off. And you're like, whoo, we're good to go. We made that, you know. And uh, obviously Princess Leia is upset at Poe Damon for, um, you know, not following orders and also, you know, uh, having a lot of casualties. You know, Poe Damon is just like, well, you know, we killed, we, we got the dreadnought, we destroyed it, you know, so how can you be mad? And she's just like, yeah, but at what cost? You pretty much lost the entire bomber fleet, everyone trying to protect the bombers, you know, it was only like you and like, you know, the dude who drinks coffee all the time and, you know, Sarah from Office B2, that's all who made it back, you know, so that, that there, she, I, that was like this to me because I was like, man, that is true, Poe really did kind of, he did good, but he didn't do good, you know what I mean? But that's war for you. So anyway, they come out of hyperdrive, they think they safe, and then boom, here comes the first order out of hyperdrive with Snoke's ship, which is redonkulously massive. Like I'm pretty sure it's the biggest ship we have seen on film besides like Star Killer Base. Not really a ship, I guess, but maybe I don't know. Okay, Death Star. I think the Death Star was bigger than Snoke's ship. I'm not sure. I'm not measuring stuff. I'm just spitballing here. Uh, so, yeah. So, they come out. And they somehow found a way to track them through hyperspace. I don't know how. They don't really even clarify in the movie how they are able, or, blah, 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 are able to track through hyperspace. So... I don't know. Anyway, so, you know, they start attacking them, um, and they send out some of the TIE fighters and stuff like that to get the ship because the ship manages to stay out of range of the big destroyers, uh, blasters, and stuff like that. So they send out the TIE fighters and things like that to, um, you know, to go attack them. And um, part of that fleet, that little squadron, is Kylo Ren. So Kylo Ren uh, comes out, and he um, 
you know what? I'm going to talk about this backwards. Well, you'll see what I mean in a second. But anyway, so Kylo Ren comes out of the fleet, and he's shooting people up and stuff like that. So he comes around, and he comes where Princess Leia is in the, uh, I guess, in the, um, like, the main, I don't know what y'all call the main level where uh, the, I don't know, the headquarters of the shit. Okay, I forgot what that's called, the helm, whatever. Uh, so where Princess Leia is, and he goes like he's going to go shoot the shooter, but he didn't, and I was surprised at that. I thought he was just going to shoot her and blast her off the screen, but he didn't, you know what I mean? And that made me feel, it kind of made me feel good in a way. I was just like, I was like, man, Kylo going to kill her. We, we know Kylo going to shoot and fire, but then he doesn't. He like, he's like holding the trigger, then he's like, then he lets it go with the trigger. You know what I mean? Like, that just kind of surprised me. Did that surprise you? Because that got me. Uh, <clears throat> my bad. Yeah, it definitely did. To be honest, I sensed a little more in that scene than what they pass it off as. And what I mean by that as, or what I mean by that is, it seemed like Leia, who's pretty decent in tapping into the force in this movie, it seems, it kind of seems like she knew Kylo Ren was pointing at her. And you kind of see the the camera switching back and forth to them, too. And then you kind of like to – and remember, she's not even looking. She's, like, looking this way with, with uh, Kylo coming from behind. And, you know, she kind of looks up, and it's like she feels that disturbance of him there. And I feel Kylo knew, yep, yeah, Mom is in there, but I don't think I can do it, which to me as well, kudos. I actually like Kylo. Instead of, and like I said, Anakin's like probably my favorite. Instead of actually falling completely like he does, hopefully, I'm hoping Kylo eventually, you know, sees the error of his ways. And I feel like the fact that he's still struggling with himself, yeah, definitely, I'm with you, kudos. I love that part. But, yeah, definitely, there was definitely more there to me, just saying. Yeah, I agree to that. Definitely, I agree to that. And, um, yeah, it was just an interesting scene. I just really liked how he pulled back the trigger. And I was just like, whoo, okay, this is good. My hopes got raised and then immediately got shot down because Kylo's squadron came around and TIE Fighters pew, 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 and blew up Princess Leia. Princess Leia got sucked out into space with some other people got sucked out and you know we're thinking okay um you know Carrie Fisher the per the actor who plays Princess Lair she you know passed in real life you know god rest her soul so we're thinking okay this is how she's going to you know this is how they're going to tie in you know um her death in the movie you know um so we're like you know okay cool cool I'm okay with that I understand they have to do it I understand we're good no, I was wrong. Okay, so <laughs> and this scene here had me with some serious mixed feelings because I was really 100% okay with her death. You know, I was like, okay, you know, that, that was a perfect opportunity for you to implement her death in a logical way. You know, she dies, she gets sucked out into space. We're done, you know. Uh, so they caught over to the scene. She's kind of floating in space crystalled up you know what i mean like it reminded me of a scene from guardians of the galaxy when um uh forgot his name already who's the main star star lord okay i was about to say star killer yeah me all uh, switching galaxy movies anyway star lord was like frozen like waiting for some, one of the guys to pick him up and just glossy and everything that's how she was and I'm thinking, okay, they're going to just, you know, show her, like, you know, fading away in the, in the space and, like, some nice, soft, mellow music. Just kind of letting you know, okay, this is, this is her death, you know, this is her passing, this is her finally at peace. <sighs> nah. So she's there like this. You see her flicker some fingers. You see her eyes kind of flicker and move. The debris around her starts moving. And I'm like, what 
what the heck is going on here? Like, okay, I know we're that she's force sensitive. I got that. We never seen her really use any methods of the force, uh, in I guess like physical attributes. Like we never seen her use like force push, force grip, you know, nothing like that. We just seen her do more mind like mind manipulating force senses or be able to sense people in the force and things like that, but this is the real first time we've seen her like using like actual force to physically do something, which in this case, apparently she flicks a finger and all of a sudden her arm kind of extends out and she turns into super Leia, Air Jordan Leia, whatever type of Leia you want to say. And she goes flying back into the spaceship. I'm I, like, I can't even, there's just so many mixed feelings. She goes flying back into the spaceship, flies, zooms right in, puts her hand on the door. How? And then, you know, Poe, Damon, and some of the other people run to the door and save her, bring her in. She's unconscious now, but still alive. So many mixed feelings on two parts. Number one, I don't know. I don't know. I know a lot about the Force. I'm not sure how much of the Force. I do know a little bit like it can sustain you in space. I kind of know that. Like I do know there's certain, there's been certain characters like in the books and in the anime series to where they kind of sustain themselves with the Force. But they've also used, like some of the characters that have done it, they're, they're, not human they're an alien race the ones that i have seen so they're they've actually said that they're you know um i guess alien you know bodies have the ability to kind of survive space a little bit so it kind of helped so i, I don't know it's just mixed feelings there i just feel like th th that makes no sense she, you got her flock mm. the other half the other half okay is that that was a perfect opportunity to kill her and you didn't do it now how's this going to go with the rest of the movie now of course they could have made already made this scene and she could have passed uh afterwards okay so but they could have went back and edited it i don't know just kind of weird what did you think about super leia air jordan leia you know what, what's your thoughts on that Personally, I thought it was Balagna. Now, <laughs> I <laughs> personally, I thought it was cool. I really did. My problem is she never showed any signs of using the force. Yeah, she kind of showed that she could like uh, sense things through the force or whatever. But as far as actually, like when uh, Han Solo died and she like sensed it from across the galaxy before Ray even came back, I get that. That's cool. For her to do something that any normal Jedi, Sith, whatever, I, I can't really see them doing. Yeah, it kind of annoyed me. And uh, I, I do know certain ones, like Starkiller, he lasted like 13 days and nights, no food. He just had the force, you know, kind of in and out of his body. He, he kind of lived off the force. I know he's done it. I know Luke has done it on Hoth, where it was very cold. He had no food. I don't know if it was like a week or whatever, but he had to put himself into a force coma to actually survive. And I thought, you know, that was really cool. I could see Luke doing that. Leia, not so much. And I am annoyed, just like you, that, well, I'm kind of annoyed. It's, it's bittersweet. I don't like, in a way, that they didn't use that moment to kill her off. Because I feel like that would have done justice to her character. And that, that could have been a perfect exit. The thing is, they finished filming this movie before she passed. And so now that you kind of like played with that, I, I, I can't even see how they could possibly kill her off in the ninth movie. And I saw certain articles that said the director said, Leia will not be a number nine. And that... I, I just don't know how they're going to do that. So, yeah, I, I do feel like they missed a good opportunity. Even though I don't want to see her go, I know that it would have to happen. But if they did bring her back CGI, can't say I'd be completely mad. 
I can't say that I will. That's just me, but I don't know about you. I personally have no issues with the CGI. Sometimes, you know, they look, they don't look as good as they need to look, but for me, in Rogue One, I thought those, those CGI, like young Princess Leia and, um, oh man, I forgot that really old dude's name. I forgot. But anyway, they were both CG'd in the movie, and they looked good to me. I know people had problems with it. It's not going to look perfect, people, okay? It's CG, okay? It's not going to look like, you know, the straight person rules straight out of the grave. It's like, yup, I'm here. Let me moisturize my skin and get to it. Like, that. <laughs> It's going to not look perfect, you know, but it's going to look dang close. You know what I mean? It's just going to look really, really close. So I never, I don't know. I don't understand that part there, but, you know, we'll we'll see how that goes. But anywho, um, yeah, so that whole scene just, I don't know, a little weird. Okay, move on to the next topic. We just going to move on from, from that there. Um, let's see, we're going to... Um, talk about I guess now how Ray the whole the whole mixture is of you know Ray finding Luke you know Ray being on the island with Luke and then Ray kind of contacting Kylo through force chat <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call it I don't know what it is but I'm gonna call it force chat okay that's that new app okay go to your Google app or your Apple i store it's gonna be called force chat not really, it's fake, don't really look, okay? So anyways, um, to me, the whole scene with Ray and Luke, the, I, I'm, a, I'm just summing, summing this all up here because I just, this is just, just too much. That whole scene on the island just could have been better to me, okay? When Ray handed Luke the saber and then he looks at it and then tosses it, I, part of it I thought it was funny, Part of it, I was upset, like, that's what you're going to do. You know, you're not going to say nothing important. And then the other half, I was thinking, well, that eh, kind of makes sense if they're going to go for a character that's disconnected from the Force, that doesn't want to deal with anything with Jedis or lightsabers or anything of that method ever again. He just kind of wants to be left alone. So I can pour the line understand that. And then you go through that whole scene where there he's, like, doing stuff on the island and he's like drinking bluish green milk from some sort of aliens stuff like I don't know it was just a weird scene the whole thing I didn't really care for it um, I would have felt much better if Ray got there and they was like and Luke was like okay I'll train you and then they get to it or if Ray got there and Luke was like hey I'm not gonna really help you you know and Ray either seriously started training by herself or she left. I don't think the whole other bull crap of, you know, Luke surviving and getting fishing on a pole and it, I don't know, made no it just made no sense to me. Um uh, yeah. Ray though, during those scenes, somehow, you know, that island was I guess used to be maybe a Jedi training ground or something because it did have a strong connection with the force both on the light side and the dark side so because it has such connection with the force there Kylo way across the galaxy somehow was able to force psychically tune in to Rey uh, force chat if you will and they was able to talk to each other across the galaxy but it just wasn't simply being able to talk to each other it was almost like they was in the same place, in the same room, same location. Like, um, you know, Kylo can feel the breeze of the ocean where Ray was at on the island. He could feel the wind. I mean, there was one part where he wiped his face and it was water on his face. And he was just standing in the middle of the spaceship, you know, where there was no water at all. So I did think that was cool, you know, because it really shows the power of the force. We've never really seen nothing like that. So it just makes me more intrigued on what are they thinking next, what are they going to do next with the Force. So I really like that part there. Um, I, I just, I did have a little bit of mixed feelings, kind of, because Ray and Kylo, 
during the force chat started to seem like it was getting a little intimate. I don't know what was there. I don't know if it was like, you know, I don't know if it was like a brother or sister bond or like, uh, you know, hey, what you doing Saturday night? Let me take you out type of bond. You know, I'm trying to get some. I don't know. But, you know, they touched hands, which half of it understand because, you know, they, they, they felt like they actually was able to hold each other's hands from across the galaxy, which shows the power of the force. But the way they did it just seemed a little creepy to me. I don't know. It was something about it that I was just like, my skin started crawling. I didn't like it. I don't know. You know, so that just what, what you thought about that whole scene there with the island and Luke and, you know, how Luke was and I guess the whole force chat. What you think about that, Neji? First and foremost, we're making an app. We're calling it Force Chat. That's the new thing. <laughs> Nobody steal that. That's ours, okay? That's first of all. Uh, <laughs> second, I don't know if you read a little bit about uh, what Mark Hamill said about his character, Luke, but he said that was not really his character. And he felt that they didn't really go in depth to where, you know, Luke who was so, like, he was like a destined child in the huge Skywalker legacy, which is probably like the most important legacy or heritage in the galaxy. He didn't necessarily understand how Luke could have fallen to that point. Not necessarily go evil, but fallen to a point to where he completely doesn't even like the Jedi code. He's up there like, who are they to say that the Sith was wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know, they contradict themselves. You know, he when he was saying that in the uh, in the movie, Mark Hamill, yeah, he I, I remember these articles. He was just like, that wasn't his character. He understood for the development of, you know, Ray. But regardless, yeah, I didn't necessarily feel like that was Luke either. But I digress. And as far as Ray doing the force chat with Kylo. I do remember Snoke saying that he connected them using his power, which again, that dude is phenomenal in whatever he could do. But that island, I do believe it was some type of sacred grounds. And that's why Kylo could not see Ray's surroundings, but she could see his because it was such a magical place to where, you know, that was just supposed to happen. And I felt they were kind of in an intimate way uh, talking or understanding each other personally to me. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it did feel like that to me. And if in Star Wars 9, they definitely, uh, you know, represent the light and the dark, I mean, it would kind of make sense that those two would have to balance the two. You know what I'm saying? So maybe they have to build that intimate relationship to overall, I guess, save the galaxy. That would make sense to me. Right. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, ex exactly. I agree with all that. It just it did seem, I don't know. I didn't like how Luke was really. I mean, I thought he really did great acting. I just didn't like. Like, Mark Hamill playing Luke was great, phenomenal. But Luke himself, the way they was leading the character in a certain direction, I really didn't, I really didn't like that. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. That's just what they was going with. So we'll see how 9 goes, and we'll talk about a little bit more Luke a little bit later on. But uh, I also want to say that this, this little segment is just going, I'm just going to, simply dub it pointless scenes okay just simply pointless scenes so ray was on the island okay so there's a lot of force stuff going on there there is a dark side section that was kind of similar to the the little dark forest on or dark cave and on dagobah where luke went in there and yoda was kind of watching him well ray goes to this little hole in the ground where there's water and stuff and you know she slips and falls in that whole scene was dumb to me you know she's just standing in the mirror there's a bunch of you know hers in the mirror she's snapping her fingers 
And then, you know, she touches the mirror and is like, hey, show me who my parents are. Two people come up and then they come into one. You know, all you see is the shadow outline. And then I'm thinking, okay, maybe we're about to see something. And then when you kind of look at the shadow of the character, you can see the character is, you know, a little smaller, a little more slim. You know, you're kind of thinking, all right, this is either a girl or, you know, a, a child or, you know, maybe a more slimmer man. A lot of thoughts was going in my head, man. When I saw the, the slim character, um, I thought of, like, young Luke. Uh, I thought of Obi-Wan, like a young Obi-Wan, you know, I was thinking, um, who else they, I actually thought of Princess Leia, you know, I was like, who is her parents? I even thought of, um, I even thought way off the spectrum, I thought it might have been like uh, Palpatine, Darth Sidious, because you know, he's more of a, he's shorter, slimmer built, and I was thinking, that'd be crazy if, the, you know, if it was Darth Sidious, she was Darth Sidious' daughter, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I was just waiting for it, and then you just see a herself pop up, which I would have been perfectly okay with if it was like herself in the dark side. Like she had the dark side eyes that, you know, Anakin had in the Revenge of the Sith, or, you know, she was like more pale looking, you know, like her skin was more pale looking. She just looked evil. I might have been okay with that, but no, it's literally her looking in the mirror, and I'm just like, Okay, what's going to happen next? Nothing goes right back to her and Luke. I, not, it's pointless. They could have left that. They could have left that whole scene out right there. They could have filled that in with a bunch of lightsaber training or something. Like they, could, I don't know. They, they could have done something with that. So that's a pointless scene to me. Um, I also think uh, changing over topics real quick. Different scenes. I mean, the Finn and Rose scene. Okay, that whole scene was pointless to me, okay? Uh, I think if they had to go to the Death Star, and, uh, not Death Star, oh man, to the one of the dark uh, Star Destroyers or the Snoke's uh, spaceship or whatever and like disable the, uh, their ship. I forgot what they was gonna exactly, oh, disable the tracker, I remember now. Um, I feel like they could have just did that and they could have had an entire scene of them on the ship trying to disable the tracker, you know? Uh, so they was sent to another planet. I forgot what the planet was called, but it's like a casino. Kind of reminds you of Vegas in a way, kind of a Vegas style planet. There's gambling horse races. Mm, excuse me, there's a casino and things like that. They went there to look for a guy who can hack stuff, who can hack security stuff and get beyond like firewalls and be able to get them in to get to the tracker, which I borderline, I guess I can understand, but they could have shortened that up. They could shorten that whole scene up. They didn't need them there, you know, destroying stuff and riding the horses, being chased by like, you know, the space police that they, they didn't really need all of that. To me, that scene was pointless. And the only, and then at the end of that scene, they go with a guy that they found in the jail cell. And then the guy like wakes up is like, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I can hack stuff, I can do it, and they're like, well, you know, this is important, we need, you know, we're here to get who we're sent to get, he's like, oh, okay, goes, unlocks the jail cell, walks off, and they're like, this is our guy, this is who we need, he unlocks the jail cell, we need him to get us in a high-tech, first order, spaceship, starfighter, with a bunch of people who can easily kill us, this is the guy, I'm just like, Okay, whatever. Let's let's run with it. Let's go with it. Since that's where that's what we want to do. So that whole scene may know just didn't make sense to me. The only point to that scene, there was a little kid. Uh, there was a little kid during that whole scene who helped out with the horses that has you, you see later on and in the movie that he has force sensitive abilities. He he force put the broom into his hand. So uh, later on, it kind of sets the map for that scene there for because you see the kid with Finn and Rose and then you see him later on at the end, you know, so it kind of sets that scene up. But still, they could have done something better with that. What did what what'd you think of that whole little pointless scene? I, I definitely feel like they uh, 
they extended that more than it needed to be. To be honest, a lot of the, you know, it, it kind of seemed like a lot of filler to make the movie longer. And, uh, you know, two and a half hours for a movie, I mean, there are some things that you could have cut out to make, make it more, uh, you know, more concise and just get the point across. One of the things that I kind of hated was how the dude with the rose on his, uh, what was it? A, it was like a flower. It was something. Yeah. Who had it on his tux? Who was gambling? He, uh, he. You see him one time, and that's it. And that's where I feel like this scene became completely pointless. Maybe it gave some background to Rose and how she came from that area, and she hated the rich, and she came from, you know, poverty. Maybe that was like part of the setup, but I feel like they could have done that in a better way. And I, I don't like how they executed how the girl who was kicking the clicker was her sister, and there was like no substance to the sister whatsoever. That that's another one of those things where I'm just up there like, why? You know what I mean? But I mean that's this is me. That whole scene, yeah, I feel like that. I just felt like backtracking to her sister really quick, just because, um, you know, I felt like that kind of intertwined with the pointless of this little segment here that's just me you know whatever <laughs> yeah exactly just just pointless they could have done so much with those scenes but like you said fillers I agree that they made it to fillers so we're gonna uh, go ahead and switch to the next uh, topic here which I'm excited about okay uh, <laughs> okay so Pretty much, uh, Ray on the island, you know, she realizes that um, she's not going to get the help that she needs, and she needs to, you know, she's not going to get it from Luke, and she needs to just go and, and try to handle stuff on her own because her friend need her friends need her, the rebels, the rebellion needs her, you know, um, so she, she's just going to go ahead and go. By the way, right before she goes, she fights Luke, you know, in... Um, and anger because uh, they, Ray and Kylo force touch, force chat, and then they touch hands in a for, force chat. Uh, Luke finds out, you know, it's like stop, you know, and he he kind of cuts all that out, and then um, you know, he walks away and he's like, she, I forgot what she asked him. But anyway, she hits him in the back of the head, and I'm like, hold up, you don't hit Luke like that, like. Oh, what's about to happen right now? So Luke gets up, and um, exactly what I thought was going to happen. They start fighting, and that for about pretty much the whole scene, about you know three fourths, about maybe ninety percent. Luke is just schooling her. You know, Luke is like not really trying. He's just kind of you know dodging her hits, and it's just like all right, whatever, girl. Okay, you know. And uh, he grabs her stick, tosses the stick, and he's like, look, you you know, I'm a master. You might as well not even try. And then she force pulls the lightsaber. My man Luke got a stick, okay, a regular wooden stick. She pulls the lightsaber. They fight. <laughs> she, you know, obviously is going to cut through the stick. And when she cuts through, you know, he dodges and he falls back. And he's able to kind of catch himself with the force and he's floating up. I thought that part was really cool. You can also see the power of Luke, you know, just the little touches like that is like, look, man, look, hold up. You ain't going to drop me on my booty, okay? So, you know, you need to back up. But I thought that little scene was really good. You know, when I, I, I watched the movie twice, by the way, and when I watched it the first time, I was like, this is stupid. This is dumb. Ray's never going to beat Luke. I'm done. I'm about to walk out the theater. Watched it the second time, and I was like, okay, you know, Luke had the upper hand the whole time. The only reason he even fell back was because she cheated, if you will, and force pulled the lightsaber. Because let me tell you something. If Luke had his lightsaber, it'd be a different story. It it just would. We all know it'd be a complete different story if Luke had his lightsaber. That's all I'm going to say about that there. Anyway, I'm going to jump forward to real quick before I jump forward. You got anything to say about that little fight scene? Uh, no, not really. Um, I didn't necessarily, uh, like how she kind of overpowered Luke. 
But, I mean, at the same time, I guess it was a necessary scene so that she could get the answers about why Ben or Kylo fell to the dark side. I mean, and I, I didn't necessarily like how Luke, in that moment where he saw the darkness in Kylo, he, he pulled his saber. I, did, I felt like that was not very Luke-like. And maybe that's one of the things that Mark Hamill was talking about. He was like, that wasn't necessarily my Luke. But... Other than that, yeah, I got nothing else to say about it. I, you know, I, I guess it was necessary. That's what I'm gonna say. I guess it was a necessary scene. Yeah, that was right. I forgot about that. How in the flashback, as he was telling, you know, the story of what happened, because I forgot in the force chat, Kylo was like, "Yeah, Luke tried to kill me. He's a terrible person." And then, you know, Ray's like, "Well, what's the truth? I want to know. You know, did you really try to kill Kylo? You know?" And he tells his side of the story, and you part of partly understand where Luke's coming from you know you figure okay I sense this darkness all this destruction and hatred I might as well end it you know what I mean I might as well go ahead and end it and I could cut him down right now and we'd be perfectly fine no problem um but at the same time that's not Luke you know Luke has, has been the guy in all the trilogies that's always like we can do this the right way we can do this the good way you know, have patience, you know, uh, well, towards the end, you know, have patience. At the beginning of the movie, it was kind of, you know, head over heels. But, um, you know, he's always trying to do the right thing. He always makes sure he takes the right path. You know, he never cuts any corners, even if it's like, oh, if I just do this one bad thing, everybody else would be good. He still doesn't do that. He always finds another way. So, yeah, to me, I was like, yeah, that's not my loop. You know, I don't know what's going on there. But so that whole scene I thought was kind of weird, but I did forget about that. So, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward to the next topic here. Uh, Kylo Ren and Ray, uh, you know, pretty much being introduced to Snoke. Okay, Ray, well, Ray is Kylo already knows Snoke, so you know, uh, this whole scene this is definitely one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. So, you know, Ray comes in. You know, she's being brought in by Kylo uh, as, you know, his his prisoner. Um, and, you know, Snoke is, you know, now proud. Because through the whole movie, Snoke was kind of really doubting and questioning Kylo. You know, and Kylo is just steady trying to prove himself. So this is one thing that really to Snoke, he's proved himself with, you know, bringing Rey to Snoke. And then, you know, Rey is like, you know, I felt Kylo's feelings. He's going to be in the good side. I'm going to turn him. Snoke just laughs and pretty much let her know that Snoke has been using his force chat. See, because they got, you know, force chat uh, standard version, okay? He got force chat premium, you know what I'm saying? He got, you know, the, the special emojis and, you know, he can use, you know, secondary screens and, you know what I mean? He ain't got no ads in his stuff, okay? They got ads and stuff in their force chat, you know what I'm saying? So... He was able to, like, kind of manipulate their force chat and, you know, make them think and feel different things that wasn't there. So I just thought, wow, man, this guy is really powerful. Um, and before that scene, you also see when Kylo first goes to uh, Snoke with the helmet on and is talking to him. And then, uh, he, you know, Snoke's like, take that helmet off. It means nothing. And, uh, you know, Snoke, I forgot what Snoke said, pretty much, you know, you're worthless or whatever, and you can see Kylo go to stand up, like to get in his face, and Snoke just did this little electric shot and flew Snoke like 37 feet across the spaceship, and he's just like, yeah, so get the flip out my face, and somebody, somebody give me my cup of tea, and that was the end of that scene, and right there, I was like, yo, Snoke is the truth, okay, we, there's something about Snoke that's really powerful, so anyways, back to this scene, Ray is trying to... I guess, if you will, over, not overthrown, like, kind of, I guess, kill Snoke, if you will. She's trying to kill Snoke, you know? She's trying to run up on him, trying to, like, force, use the force on him, trying to force pull her saber back. You know, she even tries to des desperately use Kylo's lightsaber. The whole time she uses all these tactics, and Snoke is just tossing her around. I mean, when she force pulled her lightsaber, Snoke just redirected it, smacked her in the back of the head, put it back next to his chair, 
I mean, Snoke is just smooth, man. He is so cool. He's so smooth. And if he's going to make you, like, he's going to beat you and make you look stupid while you, like, I, I just like the way he does stuff. So smooth. He had a gold robe on. Ah, my man was so fresh. You know what I mean? He was just so fresh in the movie. Instantly became one of my favorite characters. And then some dumbness happened, which I don't understand. So, you know, Snoke wanted Kylo to kill Rey. And Kylo went to go up to kill Rey. And, you know, he has his lightsaber in his hand. Uh, Rey's lightsaber is sitting next to Snoke. And Kylo's like, I know what I have to do. And, you know, Snoke is feeling Kylo's force and, you know, rage and stuff like that as he's going to go strike down Ray, and he's like kind of guiding him like go on Kylo you could do this you know and at the same time Kylo turns on his lightsaber turns on Ray's lightsaber as he turns it to point it at Snoke and the lightsaber goes through Snoke and <laughs> chops him in half okay he kills Snoke chops him in half kills him I cannot tell y'all the most mixed feelings of rage, confusion. I don't eat, I can't even, like, look, I'm so pissed. I'm about to turn off this video right now, okay? Like, I do not understand how you have a character that y'all build up so much, have a character with that we don't know much about, that we want to know more about. Character so powerful and cool. Gold, sparkling crystal robe looking like Hugh. Hefner sitting up there, and then y'all kill him. The really the first time we see him, R really y'all kill him. Y'all couldn't wait for nine. Y'all could have killed him in nine, or at least to towards the end of this movie or something. Just mm, that scene was just crazy. That scene was crazy right there. It just pissed me off. Um, I I don't know. I don't even know what to say to that. I, I really love Snoke. I became a Snoke fan instantly at the beginning of this movie. And then I was just so pissed. Like the rest of the movie I tried to enjoy, but I just kept thinking, why did they kill Snoke? Maybe he's not really dead. You know, um, it just really bothered me. I don't know. I will have to say, though, it kind of... They kind of redeemed the scene a little bit with this epic fight scene of Kylo and Rey kind of on the same side fighting the, um, uh, crap. What was those guards called again? I think they were Protarian guards. Right. Protarian guards. So the guys in the red, okay, with the ninja-like sword slash samurai look to them were the Protarian guards. And it was like six or seven of them. Rey and Kylo fought in that scene back to back which I thought was really cool, and I'm thinking, okay, Kylo is good now. All right, that's an interesting twist. Okay, that's an interesting twist. He's a good guy now. We never really had in the movies a dark side, you know, villain go good to the light side. We've seen the other way around, so that was just really interesting. I was like, okay, this is where we're going. You know, and they do the whole fight scene, which was a really good fight scene. Um, you know, Ray, I thought for someone to not really been able to train, be able to be trained in the force, someone who hasn't really had much experience, I thought she did better than what she should have. She did get beat up. She did get hit. She did have struggles. You know, Kylo, I'm pretty sure he did take on more of uh, the Paterian, Paterian guards. <laughs> Those red guards, um, I think he took more out. But still, Ray, I just thought should have. Not, I thought I just thought she should have struggled more. She, I don't know. Ray just seems way too good for the level that she's at, you know. Um, and I, I get that maybe there's something special about her, but still, just that scene was good, but just really had mixed feelings about it. What, what did you think about it, man? Just, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say first for your boy Snow, that death. Was just stupid to me, and it was mainly because it built him up so much. With even number, you know, number seven, he he was like just built up so much, and I feel like he had more of a presence there. You just saw more of him here. He just seemed a little more cocky, I guess, in his little Hugh Hefner robe, just a little more cocky than when he was like, you know, the giant hologram in number seven. 
but he did have a presence to him, and I feel like he could have been Darth Sidious scary, but they just kind of just did him away, and it kind of makes me think maybe he wasn't really the villain of this movie. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Kylo isn't the main villain of this movie. Either. Maybe it's just the First Order. The First Order in itself is the main, I guess, villain of this movie. It just made it stupid. That, now, the scene, the fighting scene after that was really good. I really liked it. Ray was definitely a little above her class. But at the same time, she was able to hold off Kylo Ren. And she was, you know, holding off some of the guards herself. Kylo was, like, snapping necks and stuff. From what I remember, that's just what I remember, you know, he's – even that one part where she threw her saber and it, he just like straight up right through the dude's head, right behind him, that was pretty cool because I thought he was just going to stab through himself. But compared to like Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon Jinn, all the old Jedi, you know, Mace Windu, they weren't as mobile. But, I mean, you do got to kind of think. Kylo's a little more experienced, but he also still has that injury where in the beginning of the movie, he was like, it's nothing. And, uh, you know, Ray's still learning. So for what it was, it was really cool. And uh, I really had good hopes for Kylo Ren. But when he was up there, like, rule the galaxy with me, personally to me, I was like, dang, man, that's a bummer. Because it would be cool to see him, if he even turned into, like, one of those gray Jedi, you know, one that's in the middle. That would be pretty cool too. It'd be the first one I think they have on screen, and I don't know how you feel about that, but yeah, um, exactly. So, like I said in the beginning, where Kylo and Ray sort of fighting back to back, fighting with each other as a team, you know, and they were actually helping each other. Like they would look over and be like, "Oh, that person's struggling. Let me throw my saber or uh, let me help slash somebody," you know. So I was like, "Man, they really working as a team. Kylo must be good now." And then after the whole fighting scene, Kylo was like, hey, take my hand. We're going to rule the galaxy and, you know, make the galaxy how we want. We'll be unstoppable. And I'm just like, okay, wh which way are we going here, people? Which way are we going? I was just so confused because I actually was happy that Kylo was a good guy. I don't know why because it, it just, I don't know, it just made me happy. And then when you find out, no, he's still evil. He's still bad. And I was just like, okay, um... All right, I guess this is cool. Fine. That whole little scene, you know, I was really curious if Ray was going to go to the dark side because I'm trying to think, what's the twist? What's different here? You know, are y'all going to do something that's just going to make me, you know, because y'all already put a lot of surprises in the movie that I'm like, why y'all put that in the movie? I mean, y'all killed Snoke. I definitely had no idea that was going to happen. So I'm thinking maybe Ray is going to go to the dark side because, you know, throughout the movie, you kind of see... You think, okay, Ray is connecting with Kylo and putting Kylo to the light side, but maybe it was the other way around. You know, Snoke was manipulating their force chat. But, um, you know, and then that whole scene to where Ray is like, you know, your parents are, you know, he was saying, I know about your parents, okay? You know, come with me. I'll tell you, I know about them. You know, she's kind of struggling, and he's pretty much saying, like, look, your parents are garbage, the trash, they threw you away. Okay, they're nobodies. They threw you away. Okay. They was just like, you know what? This baby's too heavy. I don't want it. That was it. <laughs> and then, you know, he's saying all this stuff that no one cares about you. You're a nobody and all of this. But I care no. about you. You know what I mean? Come with me. I care about you. So, you know, I could see his tactics there. I was like, that's kind of smart. But, you know, I, I, that whole scene just had me all mixed feelings. And I just don't know if he really knows who Kyle, who Ray parents are. I don't know if he was just talking crap to get her on her side. You know, there's a lot of theories with that there. Um, you know, so like I said, we thought that Ray was going to grab his hand because she'd reached out like she was going to grab it. But then she force pulls her saber. Well, at the same time, Kylo force pulls the saber. So they're both forced pulling the saber, and that scene just, it was like kind of a, the scene was like, didn't have to be put in there, 
but I enjoyed it. That little scene of them force pulling the saber was just really cool. We've never had nothing like that before. And to have them both tear apart, you know, Luke's saber, which is now Ray's saber, tear it apart because they're both force pulling so strongly. I was like, I was wow. I was like kind of impressed at that. So, you know, that, that whole scene was just really cool. You know, what did you think about that little and hey, I know your parents seen and all that stuff. Personally, that scene to me was absolutely hilarious because <laughs> Kylo just sounded like he was like, you want to know who your parents are? They did drugs. They threw you into a dumpster. You don't matter in this story. This is the Skywalker story. You don't matter. You do do. Who cares? Trash. Trash. But I don't care about you. That's literally how he was saying that. And I was just up there like, I laughed in the theater. Everyone else was just kind of like, no, me, I was like, how do y'all not find this funny? Like, he basically just told this girl, you don't matter, you stupid. I don't even understand how you're you stupid. <laughs> stupid. But that scene where they were pulling was actually really cool. For her to be able to have the same amount of strength that Kylo had right there really blew my mind. I was up there like, how in the world is Ray doing this? Because it's still Kylo Ren, the dude that had the force freeze where like a blaster was about to hit him and everything, stopped in midair. And it's like he's way more adept. The only thing Ray really did was what? Lift rocks? And she did it by just touching the ground and she did it, you know, kind of without even thinking about it in a way. Other than that, yeah, I, I kind of feel like they're giving Ray a little too much too early. Uh, that's me. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I didn't even think about how how the heck Ray is going toe to toe with Kylo in the Force. You know, I mean, Kylo still had a lot to learn, but he still should have been more powerful since he's been actually properly trained and he's you know been at it longer. I mean, he's been trained by Luke. He's been trained by Snoke. He's trained himself. Like you know. He's been trained. I, I don't. I'm pretty sure the Knights of Ren is like his own little circle, you know, uh, that he might have created with the other rogue dread eyes. I think. So yeah, he's been training with them. I I just think he has a lot more experience. So it's just, I I guess either they was just like, you know what, we're gonna be dumb and just have the newbie have you know show Kylo up. Or they're just trying to really emphasize on Ray is special. Ray is special. She has really strong force powers and skills at such a low novice level. That's probably what that is. But anywho, um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the um, end scene. Uh, this is towards the more uh, end scene in the movie to where I'm going to split in two parts. Okay, first part is that Towards the end of the movie, there's a long behind chase scene of, you know, the Rebels trying to get away and the um, First Order trying to catch him, um, which took forever, you know. You had um, Admiral, Admiral Holdo, um, which took over leadership uh, when Princess Leia, um, you know, super... Leia back to the spaceship and passed out. So she's been, you know, taking command while Leia's been passed out. And uh, apparently she had this plan that she didn't tell nobody. So, you know, Poe Damon was like, I don't like this. You know, we don't know what's going on. I'm going to have a mutiny. And I'm thinking the whole time in the movie, if she just simply told the plans to her people, there wouldn't have been no mutiny. There wouldn't have been no fight amongst yourself as the First Order is trying to kill you. So that whole part I thought was dumb. Then finally, Princess Leia wakes up, you know, um, pretty much stuns Poe. Poe wakes up later on and is like, look, this is the plan. Princess Leia is like, look, this is the plan. This is what we're going to go with. And then Poe is just like, um, that's dumb, but okay, let's go with it, you know, since you're Princess Leia. Whatever. So, <laughs> okay, um... So they're trying to escape the spaceship while trying to still lead on the First Order. Well, the um, yeah, they figured it out because the guy who apparently is the you know Finn and Rose found to hack the um, tracker thing 
apparently gave them up and they figured it out. So then they started shooting at him and stuff like that. Uh, I will have to say this scene was one of my coolest scenes I'm about to say, and I just really did like it. Avril Holdo, Hold, Holdo, I didn't really like her character. Didn't like it at all. Had nothing for her. Um, she looked good. Thought the purple hair was weird, but whatever. Star Wars universe. There's a lot of weird stuff. Her people's getting shot at as they're trying to escape to a rebel base. Okay, they use the escape pods. They're getting shot at. She's the only one left on the big ship. Apparently, she was just like, you know what? I've had enough of this. It's time to end it. She turns the ship around, turns the light speed on, okay, and sacrificed herself. Literally shoots, use, pretty much uses the spaceship itself as a weapon. Went through light speed, light speed and went through the whole entire First Order fleet. They went through Snoke's ship, all the stores, the Star Destroyers, everything. This scene was probably one of the coolest scenes in the entire movie. Only lasted like, what, five seconds? Just, it showed yeah. the light going through, the, the spaceships being destroyed. Everything is silent. As soon as she shoots off, the movie goes silent. And all you see is the spaceships destroyed, everything happening. I thought it was literally one of the coolest scenes in the whole movie. We've never seen anything like this in a Star Wars movie. I loved it. And from that point on, I loved Admiral Holdo for she just was gangster. She didn't even hesitate to sacrifice herself. She's like, look, I'm a sacrifice for my people. She didn't even hesitate. So I really give her props for that there. Um, that whole scene was just really cool. And then um, to counterpart that scene right before that to where um, right before that where they was getting shot at, Finn and Rose was on the big destroyer ship and you know they got caught and everything because of the the hacker dude from the jail told on them. So you know they was about to die in that scene, but they didn't because Admiral Hold Holdo shot light speed through their spaceship. So um you know the, the the spaceship is broken apart but it's not completely destroyed. So Finn and Rose is still alive, everything's on fire and burnt up and destroyed. We have Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma comes walking through the smoke, glistening in her armor, looking cool. And we're thinking, okay, now we're about to have, you know, that fight scene. We're about to see what Captain Phasma can do. And uh, I will have to say I really enjoyed this scene uh, with Finn and Captain Phasma. Uh, I, we all know that Finn was a stormtrooper, and he was supposed to be like a... Uh, a really skilled hand-to-hand -hand combat stormtrooper. He's been trained in blasters and in weaponry, so I was really interested in see how this was going to go. And we all know Captain Phasma is supposed to be bad to the bone. So we, I saw this fence, blah, blah, blah. I saw this scene and I really liked it. I thought it was really cool. They was fighting. You can tell though, Captain Phasma had a little bit of the upper hand. You know, um, and then you get to a part. It was a really quick scene, though. I think it should have been a little bit longer. But, um, you know, he, she was able to overpower Finn, knock him down. And you think, okay, Finn is dead. Great. They, You know, they killed a hero. Whatever. Fine. And then he comes back up. Apparently, there was a platform there that catches him. He comes back up. Hits Captain Phasma. She gets, you know, her helmet destroyed and stuff like that. She's on the ground. And I have, this point I also had mixed feelings. Because I was just like, I was excited that Finn didn't die. But I was always, I, all right. I was rooting for Finn, but I was rooting for Captain Phasma if I'm allowed to do that. Because I think both <laughs> of the characters are cool. And I haven't seen much from Captain Phasma. I wanted to see what she can do. But at the same time, I do like Finn, and I like when he actually fights, and he's actually, you know, strong and brave and actually does what he needs to do and not just running around sweating, you know what I mean? So I really like that from Finn. Um, but, you know, that happens, an explosion happens, and she falls to her death in fiery inferno. We assume she's dead. We don't know if she'll pull another trash compactor thing and come back in number nine. That would be kind of cool. Maybe she'll come back at number nine with the helmet off and she'll have like a scar or something. Maybe, you know, that would be cool, you know, or at least maybe maybe like the same helmet, you know, but with the hole and pretty much saying, you know, she leaves this on to pretty much remind her of what happened 
you know, so that way she has much more hatred or rage. I don't know as many ways that we could go about that there, but um, yeah, I like that scene. I like that whole scene and everything. What you think about the? What did you thought about the light, the light speed scene with Admiral Hold, Holdo and the Finn and Captain Phasma fight scene? Um, with Admiral Holdo, at first I didn't really like her to be honest. I was up there like, people are panicking. You need to explain what's going on. I get. You know, because, you know, coming out of the military and stuff, I get the need to know things. I get that. The thing is, in the crisis, things kind of change, and I feel like she could have calmed the people a little more. Uh, I don't necessarily know if what Poe did helped, and I do know that when Leia stepped through that thing with her cane and everything, she straight shot him in the chest and was like, you stupid. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I don't... Either, either way, I feel like Admiral Holdo could have calmed everyone else down a little bit more, and uh, people wouldn't have felt that way to where they needed to subdue her. But as an admiral and a person of rank who did what she needed to do, that scene was definitely one of the most game-changing scenes I've seen Star Wars do. And it's, it's cool because this movie did a lot of uh, what a lot of Star Wars movies haven't done. Like Kylo and Rey fighting back to back. You see the darkness and light fighting together. You see that scene where she sacrificed herself using the last gas that they would like have or the last fuel, you know, to save her people. Because you could see in her face when they were blowing up, she got angry. She was like, oh no, this ain't happening. Um, you, like I said, they, they did a couple things different, and it did definitely. Uh, introduce a new character. So I, I feel like that scene, I really respected it. I hated Admiral Holdo up until that moment. When I saw that she got into that driver's seat, right there, I was just up there like, Ugh. Ugh. you know what I mean? And I just, I That's had to do Phoenix it. I was like, well, I respect her. That's that Phoenix yeah, like, I, I, you know? yeah, I had to respect the crap out of her. Um, and that's all I'll say for her. Uh, what was the other scene? I was supposed to talk about this. Finn and, Finn and Captain Phasma. Finn and Captain Phasma. Okay, so Finn also real quick though, your your point on the light speed scene first, and then um, Finn and Captain Phasma. Like, did you actually like that scene of the light speed uh, going through the ships and stuff? I feel like they need to do that more, where they see more of the rebellion sacrificing themselves, even though. Towards the end of the movie, we might not talk about this, but where Rose was like, uh, I saved you, Finn, because that's how we're going to win, looking out for those we love, not just sacrificing. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was definitely different, and I kind of like the aspect of uh, our numbers are dwindling. There's a few of us left. I don't know. If, you know, there will be a lot of Gears of War fans uh, watching this, but when Dom did that, in Gears of War 3 and sacrifice himself, that was the most powerful moment that that game could have done. Um, Halo Reach, when every single Spartan slowly like sacrificed herself each time. Those kinds of things really help the story, and they're probably like my favorite story aspects when they're used. So definitely, I feel like Star Wars should do that more. Yeah, when they're used. Um, as far as, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as Finn and Captain Phasma, I feel like let me just start by saying Finn is probably my favorite out of like this new trilogy. He's probably my favorite. Um, I don't like how short the scene was. And as far as being like an A1 stormtrooper who was a weapons master, who even did good going against TR-8R. Traitor! <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, exactly. Traitor. And you know what I mean? Finn, I feel like they definitely need to utilize his uh, his weapon master quality a little bit more. But he kind of did. The weapon that he used to fight Captain Phasma, that kind of looked like TR-8R's weapon to me. I think it was. Especially when he was like, come on! And you got like a good look of it. It kind of looked like it. And I feel like anything in that room, Finn should have been able to pick up and use as a weapon. Yeah. But hopefully they you know, dig a little bit more into that with Star Wars 9 because I feel like this movie 
needed more Finn, especially after there was such an emphasis on him in Star Wars 7 with him, you know, running and, you know, he, he was kind of neck to neck with Ray. And in this movie, it was more Ray. I didn't, nah, I, I kind of wanted more Finn. But it was still cool. It was a lot of luck that he survived and that little shit was down there. That was a lot of luck because holy <laughs> crap, I was like, no, Finn. But definitely they need to they need to utilize Finn a lot more. He's definitely up there for me. Yeah, I, I will agree with yeah, all that. I, I, I definitely agree with all that. Look, um, Finn a lot. Finn and, a lot. Um, they need to use him more. <laughs> I want to not only just use him more, I understand the giant scene with Rose. Okay, they're probably like, well, you see him a lot in the movie. I mean, use him in the ways we want to see him fighting, you know, shooting stuff, you know, being a little bit more useful than running on horses and getting chased by the police, I, space police. Sorry, you know, I, I don't know, but I really do like Finn. Um, Finn is one of my favorite new era characters. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the characters I like and stuff like that, but um, I'm gonna move over to the next scene real quick uh, so we can finish this up. Um, so two two more things: um, the end battle scene to where they're on that planet with the red salt. Uh, I thought that whole scene kind of borderline remind me of Empire Strikes Back, where the, when they're on Hoth and they're fighting against the uh, AT Um you know, except now they're like the gorilla walkers or whatever. Uh, so I thought that whole scene was cool. You know, they had the bunker with the door. And, um, you know, the First Order brought this, you know, Death Star gun or whatever that's supposed to blow through the door. And, you know, Finn's like, they're all like getting picked off. They can't get close to the gorillas or this, you know, giant Death Star door breaker. And, uh, you know, they're like, Finn's like, you know what? Everyone's like, turn back, we can't make it. Finn's like, you know what? I'm gonna make it. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy this gun and I'm gonna save everybody. No one has to get through the door. We're all good. You know, they got they had the soft music playing. You know, you can see Finn boost up his little beat up, dusty looking <laughs> I don't know what it was, but there was parts flying off of it. Like, all, all of them, like, every single one of them looked like they came from a junkyard. So, I really kind of liked that. Like, I was, like, laughing that that's what they were using. But, um, so, you know, you see him, like, his spaceship's getting all bent up. And you're I'm literally like, dang, he's about to die. This is how y'all going to do Finn. You're about to kill him off. Fine. Y'all done killed Snow. Whatever, fine. Kill them off. This is a, all my characters I like. All the characters I like, y'all want to kill off. Y'all don't kill off the characters I don't like. Like, you know what I mean? And I was like, okay, this is how it's going to go. At least he went out, you know, like a gangster. Sacr sacrificing himself and destroying this big gun. All right, I, I'll, I'll prove it. Out of nowhere, here comes Rose. Pushes him out the way. Saves his life. And I was like... I did not expect that. You know, I was kind of thinking maybe Ray with Chewbacca will come with the Millennium Falcon and maybe shoot it or do something. No, that that wasn't it either. Rose came through with her little beat up junkyard speeder, came through, knocked him out the way. They both pretty much turned into dust because that's how the speeders was just only being held on with dust. So... Yeah, I, I was shocked by that scene, and I was just really happy, though, that they didn't kill Finn off. Not just simply yeah. because I liked the, his character, but just simply that I was like, we already had one sacrifice. How many y'all going to put in the movies, okay? Um, and we already had a couple unexpected deaths. Anyway, so, because they killed off Snoke too quick. I think they killed off Captain Phasma. She's even dead too quick, and there's some other people. But anyway... So uh, then that end scene, you find out that Rose, you know, saved him because, you know, she loves him, loves Finn and kisses him. And Finn's like, I don't know if I feel the same way. Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think Finn really likes Ray. I think he likes Ray in an intimate way. Um, yeah. I don't know if Ray feels the way back. I think she's real close on that line. Like if she does, like she's on that line of being really, really good 
intimate friends and on that line of yeah let's let's date and get you know butt necking and weird you know so i think they're really skimming that line um i think finn's a little bit more over that line but anyway a uh, really good scene i like the way so then in that scene luke comes back from the island he's been on the island the whole dang movie and then at the end luke comes back you know and you see him and he's like, hey, guys, I got this. Don't worry. And he walks out there facing all the gorillas and the big gun. You know, the gorilla, the gorilla walkers, the big gun, Kylo Ren and his little Kylo Ren spaceship, they all come to a halt. Luke's standing there in the middle of the salt. Luke's like, hey, I got this. Now, I should have noticed this from the beginning, okay, I'm gonna talk about it afterwards. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you oh, know, let me say something. Huh? I just I just want to say real quick before we move on a little bit farther. All right. How far? Because you remember when Finn was driving up to the? I guess it was a door battery thing. Mm, yeah. And uh, you know he got pretty close to it before Rose hit his uh, tank tank out of the way. I'm gonna just call it a tank tank. Okay. And the dust if you wheel. realize, yeah, if you realize the first order kind of just, I guess they stopped for a little bit while he dragged her in there. You know what I mean? Like there was a large gap of time where he was dragging her, I guess. And <laughs> I guess the first order was just kind of staring at them like, why in the world did she just crash into him? You know what I mean? Like it was just a lot of time before Luke actually came up. And, uh, yeah, you go ahead with Luke, and then I'm going to just say what I need to say about Luke. I didn't even notice that. I thought Luke came out, and then they were so focused on Luke that Finn had a chance to drag Rose back in. But I, you might be right. I don't even remember how that went. Well, Either, way, either way, you might be right, though. So anyway, um, that old scene, Luke comes out, looks at him, and Kylo um, is like, I want every single blaster – to shoot this guy right now, you know, um, I want all of them aimed on him, fire, fire, fire. So then, you know, they shoot the first blaster, and, and it tricks you because it's red salt, it's red dirt and red dust. He gets shot, and all you see is this red shoot up, and I'm like, Luke, no! Oh, Jesus, Luke, he dead, no! Cause it looked like he he splattered. It looked like blood and guts just shot everywhere. I'm like, oh, this is a Star Wars movie. Why is it showing like that? Like, you know, it it was like an R-rated movie. I was like, ain't this PG-13? Is this PG-13? Like, I was asking people, and then uh, Kylo was like, fire some more, keep firing. So they just kept firing and shooting, firing more and more and more. And then after that, I realized, okay, this is the dirt, this is the salt. Because more red and more, like, just spew of redness started shooting up. And you're thinking, okay, Luke, Luke ain't that big. It ain't no way there's that much Luke flying around. So, um, <laughs> yeah, they're just shooting, shooting. And Ray's like, more, more, keep firing, keep firing. And I'm thinking, dang, you could really see the hatred and rage in uh, Kylo's face, you know, when he was like, when he was really trying to destroy Luke. So then they stop firing, you know, and the red dust settles. You have Luke walk out of the dust, which surprised me. I, I was like half surprised, half not, because I was thinking, is he dead? You know, it's possible he could be dead. But then also on the other side, I'm like, this is a master Jedi. He might got something up his sleeves. So he comes walking out, you know, looking all suave, and he's like, which I also had mixed feelings because I was like, Luke probably wouldn't do that in the Star Wars movie, you know, being how Luke was in the original trilogy. But then at the same time, I was thinking, this is a new Luke. This is a more older Luke, uh, you know, a different type of direction for Luke. And I thought it was really super cool. Like the way he just, you know, dust off my shoulders. I just thought, man, that's just... That's just Luke saying, like, hey, I'm the man. What you going to do? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all that in a bag of chips. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was really cool. 
I was thinking that Luke the whole time just had like a force field up and was deflecting all the shots. And then, uh, you know, Kylo Ren's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go down there. I'm going to handle this myself. General Hawks, for some reason, I don't know why, was like, you can't do that. One, I don't understand. I can't remember exactly what he said. I just remember he was trying to stop him, saying, look, he's just one man. You can't do that. Why not? Let Kylo go fight him. I mean, he is a Sith is, that uses a lightsaber. It is appropriate for him to fight a Jedi with a lightsaber. So he gets all in Kylo's face, and Kylo is like, drop the doors. General Hux is again is like, keep the doors up. And then... Kylo just force smacks him. General Luke just goes, just General Luke, wow. General Hawks just goes flying, smacks up all on the keys and the dashboard, just, yup, just his, his coat just fold over his face like uh, Neji's hair in the anime. <laughs> and he's just laying there. And then as soon as he smacks him, the dude in the front seat is like, right away, Supreme Leader, and drops the door. Like, no hesitation. He was like, I ain't gonna have him force smack me. So I really enjoyed that scene. Uh, the whole right scene away. with, yeah, that's what he said, right away. Boom. The whole <laughs> scene when he gets down there, Luke facing against Kylo Ren, I thought it was an interesting scene. I was really hyped for it. Uh, they kind of built it up a little bit, had them standing there facing each other, cape in the wind, floating, lightsabers ignited. I was like, yo, this is going to be sick. But it wasn't what you thought, okay? The whole time, Luke is just dodging the lightsaber. At first, I was like, this is so sick. Luke is a beast. Then I started thinking, wait a minute. Okay, let's really dial in here, okay? First of all, Luke looks young, okay? He's wearing a different outfit, which is fine. He could change. But he, he decided to cut his hair and stuff. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, Luke pulls out a blue lightsaber. A blue lightsaber that looks surprisingly like Ray's lightsaber, which has been destroyed and cut in half. Okay. Uh, then you got Luke only dodging, never striking, never blocking, just dodging. It's cool looking, but I think that's kind of weird. And then I'm just trying to figure out all these things. I'm like, there's something not right here. Maybe they just messed up in the movie, but something's not right. Then all of a sudden, Luke's like, you know, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. So Ray goes to strike him. The saber goes straight through Luke. And I'm just like, oh, snap. Luke got this new ability. I'm like thinking Luke has found his new force ability and he can't be hit with the lightsaber. And then Kylo slowly puts the saber in him and is like, is this a hologram? And I'm like, oh, dang. He's not really here. And then it shows across the galaxy, Luke is still on the island. So the whole entire movie, Luke is on the island. Y'all couldn't take Luke off the island. Y'all know what we want to see. We want to see Luke fighting. We want to see Luke using his force powers. We want to see the, the power of Luke. We Nothing. We don't get that. So then Luke's just like, you know, hey, you've been tricked, whatever. And he, you know, he's like, I will, I will always be with you, Kylo. And, and then he fades away. You know, the hologram fades away. Goes back to Luke. It shows Luke floating Indian style in the air. And you can see he was struggling to use, I guess, I guess they're called force phantoms or force images or whatever. You know, uh, I looked it up. I'm pretty sure it's called Force Phantoms. So Force Phantoms. And he gets done using that. Apparently he used so much Force Powers across the galaxy, which I thought was cool that he's so powerful that he's able to do that, that he fades away and becomes one with the Force, which also pissed me off. Y'all killing everybody, man. Y'all killing everybody. Why even have a Star Wars movie? <sighs> I guess I understand that y'all trying to kill off the old so that way it could bring in the new generation but that's what number nine is for y'all can at least have luke and number nine or at least luke be more powerful more fighting like give luke a bang if you're going to take him out give him a bang have him fighting with the lightsaber 12 different people and force pushing freaking gorilla walkers across the salt and ripping stuff apart 
you know, which what I thought he was going to do. You know, I thought he was going to walk in and start force pushing everything. No, nothing. Y'all just have him come in, dodge the saber, and that was it. He was done. So I was, I was a little mixed feelings about that. And then I was thinking, well, if he wasn't real, how was he able to touch stuff? Because he touched Princess Leia. was like, hey, sis, I'm going to go out there. Mwah, kiss your forehead. I'll be back. You know, I thought that was whole. All, that whole scene was weird. I didn't understand that. Maybe the Force Phantom has, it's, you know, he's able to touch stuff if he chooses to. I don't know. Um, and then that whole scene was pretty much allowing them to get away, um, you know, which, you know, the Poe pretty much guided them. I guess Lu uh, Leia was like, hey, follow him. It's his turn to be a leader. You know, they get towards the end. You know, they're blocked in by rocks, but then Ray shows up, you know, and then Ray moves the rocks. Everyone sees this coming a mile away. She moves the rocks. No, no sort of training. Moves the rocks. No problem. I'm not talking about little rocks. Talk about there's like 900 big boulders, like biggest houses. She just, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and move this because that's where my friends are. No struggle. I would accept the scene better. She was like, ugh, ugh. no, she was just like, Mm-hmm. Yep. Got it. Someone hand me a Coke. Like, just so easy and simple. And then, you know, Finn comes out and hugs her, and then the hug lasts, and it just looks good. And I'm thinking, Ray and Finn needs to be together. That would, that, that probably, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to put Kylo and Ray together. I don't know. But, um, so there's that whole scene and stuff like that there. Honestly, was that the end of the movie? I don't even remember. I think Luke fades. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Luke fades away, you know. Yeah. Ray gets him out of the rocks. They go into the Millennium Falcon. You can see Kylo kind of sense it, and Ray turns around and close. You know, you, you can see them seeing each other through the Force. Then she closes the door and they fly off. And I'm pretty sure that's the end of the movie. But uh, yeah, that that whole scene was interesting. What did you think about that whole scene there? The end scene with the red salt and Luke. And uh, things like that. Uh, well, I want to say that they definitely tricked me. Also, I really thought Luke was there, uh, especially after he touched Leia's hand, and she she had to feel that. But I'm guessing that she kind of like since she's sensitive to the force, maybe to her it felt like she was he was really touching her. But you know, it was just him using utilizing the force. Uh, other than that. Yeah, it, it kind of, even though I did notice it was a blue lightsaber, they still got me because I was just up there like, I mean, I guess maybe he found a different one, maybe Obi-Wan's or something. I don't know because, I mean, I, I, I should have noticed that it wasn't green. I should have noticed that that was my bad. Um, but it definitely, <laughs> when that first shot, I, when I when I first thought it just splattered Luke all over the salt and stuff, I was like, holy crap. That was the most anticlimactic finale I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it, <laughs> they tricked me, too. It was funny. Uh, pretty much through all of the shots, midway through all of those hundreds of shots or dozens or whatever, that's when I remembered. I was like, oh, it's red salt. So at first, yeah, they definitely got me. But I was like, watch him either be the Master Jedi who's like seriously just deflecting each shot with the Force or something like that. Or maybe – I also thought maybe that was his way of becoming one with the Force by killing himself in that instant. But it didn't play out that way. Uh, then Kylo steps out to talk to him. First of all – well, real quick, real quick. I think it's kind of funny how Kylo pulls out his saber. He kind of like stomps his right foot. And he like like this is how he does it. Walked up, <laughs> and like that. <laughs> he, did it in the he did it in the forest scene, uh, and I was like, "Why does he do that?" Like anybody else, they kind of like lift their coat, force it into their hand, and they're like ready. And I know he kind of had a stance, kind of like this in this movie or whatever, but just a weird way. <laughs> Second movie where he just did that and he had it out. I, was like, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you think it looks cool, I feel like Snoke should have told him, hey, man, that looks a little stupid. I mean, that's that's just me. You should change it up. Uh, if you don't, whatever. 
may the dark side be with you, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, I, there, there was just something with me when I saw him do the same exact stance. I was like, man, why? But anyway, yeah, I thought that was big. I thought that was his big fight scene too. I was like, I know they deleted some scenes of Luke, and maybe they'll have that in like some deluxe edition of the movie. But I know that they deleted scenes where Luke was actually supposed to fight more. But uh, yeah, I mean, I still thought that it was cool that he was moving like that. Uh, at that point, I was up there like, okay, that's legit. That can still be Luke, whatever. He's just, you know, kind of doing. Remember when he caught himself with Ray? I was like, okay, he's kind of just, you know, utilizing the ground more and slipping and sliding. And then when he said, if you strike me down, I'll always be with you. Kylo would throw him. I knew it was baloney, baloney at that point because he did not instantly fade like Obi Wan. I was up there like, nah, there's, there's no way. Yeah, unless he got that power to where. Sabers just don't affect me anymore. <laughs> she got something like that. God, that's I'm whole, activated. Yeah, that, that's some whole other superpower type stuff that I just wasn't ready for. But then I, yeah, I did. I noticed. I was like, that's not really Luke. He's not really there. His hair's cut. Unless he used a lightsaber to shave up. Yeah, he, you know, he, he changed. He was wearing his black that he was wearing in Star Wars Six and and maybe Five too. I don't know if he had the black robe yet. Maybe it was just six. But yeah, he was wearing the black. I was like, okay, it's cool, but that nah, it can't be him. Um and yeah, he 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 kind of went out with a bang. Maybe his power dwindled throughout that scene. That's another way he could have possibly touched Leia if he wasn't just powerful enough to make it feel like he touched her. Maybe at first he was like physically there. And then as you know, because you you saw it was killing him to do it. And it was powerful. I don't know if it was Snoke sliding General Hux across the floor like a mop powerful, but the fact that he was able to project himself across the galaxy, Luke, you know, kudos to that. Um, I thought it was a cooler way to become one with the Force than Kylo definitely cutting through him. And that very last part where uh, Ray saw Kylo at the bottom of the ship before she closed the door. This is my theory. Kind of makes me think that Snoke is still alive somehow. Because that was like the only way they were able to see each other and communicate and touch each other. is because he used his, I don't know, administrative powers on the Force chat and, you know, made it so that that could become possible. So kind of tells me maybe Snoke's still somewhere, you know, alive. Maybe he survived that. I hope so. Or, yeah, it would be cool. Uh, that or Kylo and Ray became so, I guess, force sensitive that they were able to do it again just by themselves. But I don't know. That's just a theory of mine. Snow can still be alive. I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, I think they have become force sensitive. Like they created that bomb with each other. I don't know if Snoke is alive or not. I just really hope he is because I, I really enjoyed his character because um, he just seemed really ridiculously powerful, you know, and just he just reminded me of Dark Sidious a little bit. You know, he's like, I'm just really powerful. I don't need a saber. You know, I'm really smart, really manipulative, you know, really cunning. You know, he, he was a little arrogant. He was, You know, you could tell he's a little bit of a show off. Um, very cocky, but he just he 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 held it well, you know, especially with the gold robe. I love the way he talked and stuff like that. So I, I just thought he's really one of my favorite characters. So I hope he's still alive. But overall, you know, well, I guess we'll see what goes on in number nine. Uh, I guess the last thing I got to say about um, for the movie, and then we could just add our little topics, our little things at the end, is that um. So what you think about Yoda? Because I, I Yoda shows up in this movie. And uh, he's in the force, and they decide to go mm -hmm. with the actual old-looking Yoda that we see in, you know, Empire Strike Back and Return of the Jedi. And, oh, man, I loved it, okay? They had Yoda there acting just like how he was in, in like I said, episodes uh, five and six. He was, you know, you know, sarcastic and witty and smart. You know, and pretty much like laughing at Luke, pretty much saying, you know, you still have a lot to learn. 
And even though you're a Jedi master, you don't really know everything. You know what I mean? And Lucas, I mean, Yoda is apparently so powerful, he was able to use the force to send this lightning bolt down. He pretty much used kidding. You know what I mean? Freaking Sasuke move and was like kidding. And lightning just came down. You know, freaking lightning blade Kakashi style. Just, I was like, I was really hyped that Yoda was there. And then Yoda was still had that original vibe of five and six. Cause that's what I grew up on was like five and six. So I was really, really just excited when I saw that. And when he sat down and I mean, when Luke sat next down to Yoda and Yoda like taps him on the head with the, um, with his cane, that there, I was like kind of learning new things about the force, if you will, like them going into the force, they still have a lot of manipulation on the real world. You know, I don't, I don't know if they're necessarily dead or not. You know, I think they are in the force, but they still can interact with this world, you know? So there's now that when I think about that, I go back and I think about that Yoda scene, I'm like, maybe Luke will still have a big part in nine even though he's in the force, maybe we'll still see him be able to do force stuff or whatever, you know, it's just, he's just going to have that glow, you know? So I was really, I was really pumped to see that. What'd you think about uh, seeing Yoda come back? I, I, I was never so speechless before in any movie <laughs> until I saw that. I was up there like, and of course I noticed that they went kind of with the puppet Yoda that they used way back in the day rather than the CGI Yoda. Mm -hmm. And I was up there like, holy crap, they really took it back to its roots. And I really hope that Yoda continues to have a part if they do continue movies because Yoda was the man. I'm still waiting on an origin movie for Yoda because oh, we be really sick. need to see Yoda crime. But the way he was so powerful to really destroy all the, the Jedi – I guess it was called the Jedi Pages or whatever, the Sacred Pages. Uh, that said a lot. It kind of said, uh, you know, maybe Yoda does believe that the Jedi need to die. You know, maybe maybe he he could agree or disagree, but I kind of felt like he left the choice to Luke and that it's a new air. Some things do need to die, so let it die. You know, and he, he needed to achieve something fresh. Um, but I do feel like Luke will come back as a force ghost because if I can remember, he only taught Ray two lessons and he said he, he would give her three. And the way Yoda came back and taught him another lesson by showing him, you know, by destroying the pages, I feel like Luke will come back, teach her that third lesson and maybe, uh, you know, help her on her way to, to become the Jedi that she needs to be. So, yeah, the whole scene with Yoda, awesome. I feel like it had a lot of emphasis to it. Feel like there's more there than what I'm really saying right now that they possibly want us to decipher because Star Wars is just always like that. There's always more to to what we see. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 seeing it. I'm I'm definitely seeing Luke coming back. And I do hope that Anakin, since they, they remastered Star Wars 6 and they added young Anakin as a force ghost at the end of that movie, I feel like Christian Penitentiary, I think is his name, he needs to come back as Anakin. And while Kylo is fighting with himself, he needs to come talk with Kylo and be like, hey, I admit I was wrong. That was not how it's supposed to be. You know, blah, blah, blah. I feel like he, he could totally do that. You know, and just kind of guide his grandson. And it would be cool if Luke was doing that and Anakin was doing it with, you know, Kyla. It would, it would be cool, but that's just me. Some of my, my theories going. Yeah, those are really good theories. I don't know which way they're going to go with it. We'll just see in nine. I would, I would like to see that way go. Um, you know, Anakin coming back uh, as himself. Because uh, they, in the remastered version of, you know, episode six, they show the force you know, ghost, if you will, of Anakin. He's standing there with Obi-Wan and Yoda. So um, I would love to see, you know, all of them in ghost form. You know, give me an Obi-Wan, give me Luke, give me Yoda, give me Anakin. I would love to see all of them, you know, guiding Kylo and guiding Rey. 
you know, I think that would be really cool. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. I mean, I think it would have been cool if also, you know, Princess Leia passed and we might have seen her in a go a force ghost form. That would have been cool too, you know. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. I love, you know, Princess Leia, you know, in, in the movie. So, you know, her acting was really good. So I can't complain with that there. But anyway, that's that's pretty much the whole movie there. And um, overall, I think the movie was really good. Um, not the best Star Wars movie, but by far not the worst. Okay. Um, out of 10? What would you say? One out of 10. What do you give it? Because I give it eight and a half. Eight and a half, um, out of ten, I'd probably say, oh, yeah, probably about either seven or eight. That's where it's at for me. Um, yeah, between seven or eight, maybe maybe seven point five. I guess I should say that's where it's at for me because I really enjoyed this movie, but there was just too many things that pissed me off, and too many things <laughs> in the movie that was unnecessary, pointless. Like, you know, it just had so much more potential. I think that's what bothers me, that this movie has so much more potential. But anyway, really good movie. Definitely worth seeing in theaters. Definitely worth seeing, uh, like, renting it. Definitely worth buying it on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, whatever you got. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, definitely go watch it. Uh, really good movie. Uh, throughout the entire movies of Star Wars, it might be, you know, from, like, one being my best my favorite Star Wars movie, it's probably like number, I don't know, number five or number four, you know, of all the Star Wars movies. Because my favorite is probably either Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back. But I really like Return of the Jedi more because of, you know, you getting to see Luke with the green saber. I was just, I grew up on that and that was just always so iconic to me. And be able to see Darth Sidious with the lightning. I know most people like Empire Strikes Back, but... Really good movie, um, and I'm just going to say uh, that uh, compared to The Force Awakens, uh, certain characters I really enjoyed more in this one is Kylo Ren. I really, I'm not a Kylo Ren fan at all. I'm not, do not really like him. In The Force Awakens, I really thought he looked cool. When I first seen him, I was like, man, this guy really looks sick. I love his mask. I love his, like, dark presence. Love the saber. He took the mask off. And I just like instantly was, yeah, no, I was like, I'm good. This guy's just a whiner. He's just a crybaby. I don't like him. And then in this one, Last Jedi, it was the opposite effect for some reason. When he had the mask on in the beginning of the movie, I just was like, nah, whatever, doesn't do it for me. Then he takes the mask off. You see the scar. You see how different he is. He takes more initiative. He, he's definitely more just more fierce. Uh, I just really liked him in, in this one better. I don't know what it is. I'm not a Kylo Ren fan, but I liked him. I really did. And uh, I enjoyed the whole performance of Kylo Ren in this movie much better. All the way from the beginning to the end. I really did enjoy it. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, if they make a Last Jedi uh, Kylo Ren statue, I might get it. If not, I'm probably going to get the, you know, Hot Toys 1-6 scale collectible of the Kylo Ren Last Jedi version because it'll come with the helmet and the unhelmeted version, which we haven't had that yet. Um, the uh, Ray, not a Ray fan, didn't care for her in the movie. I thought, you know, she's a very beautiful woman and she, you know, her acting's really good. I just don't care for Ray. I just really don't, okay? Sorry, guys, if you're Ray fans, but I just don't care for her. Finn, I really like Finn. Um, I think he was... A little better in this movie as far as um, the way his attitude was. He, he he just seemed like he was definitely more, I guess, uh, brave. Like, he just was like, you know, let's do this or whatever. I think in the first movie where you had those parts where he was like, let's run away. You don't know what the First Order does. I need to run away. You know, I was like, you know, man up, man. Man up. Get in the fight. Let's do this. You know, so in this one, he was definitely much more in the fight. He wanted to be in the fight, not like he had to be, but he wanted to be. So I thought that was great. Love Finn. Poe Damon, don't care nothing about, really. Good actor, good role, but I don't care much about him. Princess Leia, gotta love her. She's from the original trilogy. Will always love Princess Leia. Great acting. Uh, Admiral Haldo, didn't care about her at all until the end 
where she sacrificed herself. So I'm just going to have to give one of these to her. You know what I mean? She did a great job um, towards the end there. Um, what other characters I'm thinking of? Um, Luke. Always going to love Luke. No matter what. Didn't like his really how he was in the beginning or pretty much most of the movie. Didn't really like how he was. Well, Luke is always going to be one of my favorite Jedis. And I'm always going to love Luke. Especially since I grew up with Luke, you know. So, uh, Luke is always... I'm always going to love that character. I don't really think there's no way for me not to like that character. Except when he was drinking the milk. There's a split second where I didn't like the character when he's drinking the milk. And he had the milk all in his beard. I didn't like it. I was gross. Didn't like that part. <laughs> But other than those 32 seconds, I love Luke. Um, so, yeah. Then there's, you know, I did like the um, um, Snoke. Snoke is probably one of the top characters that I really do love. I just, I, I haven't even seen much of him. And I just really love Snoke. I don't know what it is. I really do like that character. I don't like how they killed him off. I don't like how... You know, his body was chopped in half, and they just had his tongue hanging out on the ground. I mean, I feel like it was very disrespectful for such a powerful character. Kind of makes you think, well, maybe he's not, you know, the all-powerful evil presence that you think he is. But we'll see. But, um, you know, definitely if they make a statue or, or Hot Toys makes a 1-6 scale of, of Prime Leader Snoke, I'm probably going to get that. Probably going to get Kylo. Maybe Luke, you know. Not Ray, because I don't really care about Ray, but I could get Ray to go with, you know, uh, the rest of the characters. I think a Finn would be cool. Um, Captain Phasma was really cool, even though it was short lived. Um, I I'm thinking about getting either the Hot Toys version or the premium format uh, statue version of her, but we'll see. It, it's my Star Wars collection is kind of here and there, so I'm gonna see what I want to want to get with that, but. Overall, really good movie and stuff like that. So um, I was pleased. How about, how about you? I definitely, uh, I definitely was pleased. I'm just gonna give you a top three of my favorite characters. Uh, number one, it's Finn. It's gonna be Finn. You know, he didn't have as much of a presence in this movie. Finn is just such a cool character with his background and being a weapons master that I feel like if they utilize that, he's just going to stand out so much in number nine. And I feel like they absolutely need to. He's my number one. Number two, Kylo Ren, because in the, in the number seven, I didn't like him either. He was whiny. I, I hated Kylo. He such a whiny little baby, man, I swear. Pissed me off. But in this movie, and I like how it was metaphoric with how he uh, he smashed his helmet because it was kind of letting us know you're gonna like you're gonna see a little more of Kylo. You're gonna like dig deeper into his backstory. So I felt like that was this movie was very if anything, it was more of Kylo's story for this movie. Um, and number three, number three, Princess Leia. She she definitely went out with a bang, and that is definitely her best performance as the princess. She will always be the princess. She'll always be loved, of course. She did so well. She really did, except for that Air Leia scene in space. <laughs> I had no. I absolutely loved her. But that's my top three, and I loved it. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much all the topics. Um, I think we ran longer than what we thought we were going to, but, um, you know, we, uh, we, we, we had to speak our minds, you know what I mean? We definitely had to speak our minds. And, uh, I know I have some friends that are like, Hey, we wanted to know what y'all think about it. So now y'all do. Okay. And, uh, y'all can check this out. So, um, really, uh, want to thank all of the, uh, all you guys for tuning in and checking us out. Um, checking us, uh, review this, uh, Star Wars, The Last Jedi. If you haven't seen it, go see it, okay? If you're a Star Wars fan, that's just a must-have. Like, you just better smack yourself if you're a Star Wars fan. If you're not a Star Wars fan, it's just a good movie, you know? Just go watch it. It's a really good movie, good sci-fi movie. Go watch it. So, it's really good. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, sign on out. Um, and, Neji, if you want to go ahead and say peace, everybody, do your thing. I'm just going to say, you know, um, as you all know, 
Uh, please hit all the buttons you need to hit. Do what you got to do. You already know all that good stuff. If you do not, you know, hit the subscribe button to join the league. Okay, like, dislike, all that good stuff. You already know. If you want to become a dark collector, you're gonna have to collect like one. Neji. I agree. <laughs> My collection is small, but I mean, I'm starting, uh, and this isn't all of it. So. Uh, Definitely, I appreciate you having me in this video. I definitely like talking about this stuff and debating. If anyone wants to debate anything that I've said or the collector has said in the comments, I would definitely be looking at it and everything. And I, I, I kind of like just having a friendly little you know, debate or anything like that. But thank you for having me in this video. I appreciate it. Yeah, so if you guys, like I said, want to comment and all that good stuff, um, maybe Neji Nerd, if he makes his own separate thingy, I might have a link in the bottom down there so you guys can check his content out. But uh, yeah, hope you have fun. So, you happy Star Wars weekend and all that good stuff. Yay! All right, later.